And Bahia Honda in the springtime, that's just a special place. And it's a different style of fishing than I do anywhere else. Come on, come on. Yeah, all right. All right. Every time I've ever been down to Bahia Honda, it is like, you know, times 100 as far as the number of fish concentrated in a small area. And those fish, they stack on top of each other. And a lot of fish, um, and sometimes it's difficult to catch them. Oh, there he is. That's a big fish. Oh, there he is. That's a big fish. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought he said you had to. I got him relaxed. Oh, dude, nice. he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. All right, we got a well full of crabs. Hoping we can get down there, catch the end of this outgoing tide this morning. Yeah. It's got some rain possible. Hopefully, it's not going to be too bad, but the wind seems to be dropping. Yeah, I said we run straight down the Via Honda, and there's tons of tarp in there. See if we can get a few to bite. Every time we go down there, it's like there's so many fish, it seems like there'd be a better way to get them to bite. But. I'm sure there is. Everybody gets stuck on yeah. the one thing that they do. Gonna be a little rough run around the corner, but once we run down the back side of the Ready to roll. marathon, it'll be pretty nice. Let's do it. So that was an awesome day getting down to Bahia Honda. And we left Hawks Cay early in the morning um, and just rode down by boat. You know, sometimes we'll trailer down there, but this was a great opportunity just to, just to run down by boat. You had your new bay boat and uh, you know, a beautiful calm morning. Uh, blaze it down there, only took us about 40 minutes. And Bahia Honda in the springtime, that's just a special place. And I don't really fish there that much. And so it's a different style of fishing than I do anywhere else. And it's interesting how, as we go to these different bridges, these different places where the tarpon will congregate, how each one will have a different style. And Bahia Honda has kind of developed its own style of fishing, which is pretty cool with the crabs. It is, it's a really cool place. And uh, you know, we'd stocked up on crabs the day before, had all these you know, different size, um, you know, smaller size crabs. Probably had like 100 crabs, because you want to have fresh and rotate them. And I remember getting there and like say, you know, we weren't seeing anything rolling. We pulled up there, we're looking around with the binoculars, we're not seeing any, any tarpon rolling. You're like, man, they, you know, I don't know, are they here, are they not here? You know, you just, you have this big wonder. I mean, I'm thinking to myself, it's, it's you know, April, May, there's always tons of tarpon here, but we weren't seeing them roll. But that was the cool thing with that active target. Now you put that down in the water and, and, and quickly start scanning, just idling down the bridges to see what's there and boom, you see it on the screen, they were there. There, wait, go back a little bit. Right there, right there. There, 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 there. That is so cool. See how you're, when you turn it a little bit, you'll get, you'll get their side. Look at that. Oh, Look yeah. at that. That is so cool. Keep it pointed right there. Don't move it. That is so cool. Just thousands of tarpon swimming around down there. They are there, and that active target is, you know, there's been some technology recently that has really changed the way that we fish with with electronics. It used to be that you would have to be over the top of the fish and project the beam down. It would send a signal back up, and if it hit anything, it would mark it as a little, a little blip or, a, or an arc. This new active target, we used that, and we could see that these fish were there. And knowing they're there keeps us in that spot, saying, you know what? I, we know the fish are here. The tide's not right yet. If we wait, we're going to get them. I'm going to try to put two corks on here, Rich. Maybe it'll hold it up a little bit better. The tide's just now starting to really go. We just saw some fish rolling back behind us here. Yeah. Maybe if we get the right depth and the right rig, we'll get bit. Last time we were here, it was all about the, the crab size. Yeah. Try to find the smallest crab in there you can. A lot of fish back there. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of fish. All right, my favorite part. Your favorite part. Oh! Nice. My favorite part. The 
Cox K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Hawks K. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. Waypoint, the destination for outdoor entertainment. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Marathon in the Florida Keys. And by Ameritrail Trailers. Daiwa. Black Rifle Coffee Company. Power Pole. And Reflex Boat Decking. We fish right here at these bridges around Hawks Cay and Long Key, and you know, there's incredible fishing, but um, but I know that every time I've ever been down to be Honda, it is like you know, times a hundred as far as the number of fish concentrated in a small area. And, and you know, if you think about the geography there, the big difference is the depth of that channel. Is Bahia Honda's channel is about tw twice, maybe three times as deep as these channels here. These are like, you know, six to eight foot on average. And that one is, you know, 20 to 30 feet. And not real wide, not as long, but deep. And those fish, instead of just laying, you know, one fish on the bottom there, they stack on top of each other. And, and just is really cool scenario, a lot of fish. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to catch them. Here, here we go. Well, I'm right on them. I got a whole pile of them going yeah. right through them. Going right through them right now. I can get bit any second. There's a lot of fish back there. You know, Bahia Honda, for whatever reason, maybe it's the depth like you're talking about, or maybe it's the current flow, or maybe it's the amount of food that comes through there, or maybe it's just the location. But the number of fish that get in there is, is staggering, really. When you hit that tide the right way, like we got there kind of early, and we had to wait, and not really seeing that much, but boy, when that tide starts flowing in the right direction, those fish start rolling and making themselves available, like you can see them everywhere. It's incredible. There he is. Here. Let's go. Get this big bite, this tarpon comes up jumping, starts running right through the bridges there. Get the trolling motor up and, and you know, as quick as can be, you're back there backing down on him through the bridge. If it doesn't happen fast there, he's gonna be around the bridge, we're gonna lose him. You gotta react fast, really having, you know, the, the trolling motor and seven anchors, you know, helps us a little bit to get going quickly. And then one of the big keys there is, is that tide's running in. If, if you, you know, if I use that tide to my advantage and, and kind of steer him one way or the other, I can, I can hopefully keep them from going between the bridges. Because if they go between that bridge pilings there at Bahia Honda, there's no way to get them through. They get through there and it's game over. Got them on. Slow. You're on the right side? Yeah, we're good. But we got lucky on that one. You know, ran through the middle of the bridge, chased him into the bay. That was cool, man. Had a bite before that, I'm sure. The crab came off. It's coming up. Gonna jump. Come on, come on. Yeah! All, All right. right. Good work, man. You know, I did something that I hadn't really ever done there before. I was thinking, well, you know, maybe I'm getting scope in that in that leader from the float. And so I started putting longer and longer leader. And um, you know, I even extended it down to where I had like maybe 25 to 30 feet a leader. And, and I think that really helped because because I was you know kind of allowing for a little bit of bow in my leader and probably getting into that strike zone. I, I felt like you know when those fish are in that certain zone, you know with that bow in the leader, we were probably drifting by too quick. So it definitely seemed to work once we got that right technique. You know, get a bite, see the cork go down real tight, and man, had them on. Oh yes, sir. Look how long that leader is, man. Yeah, that long leader, man. That's that's the longest I've ever done it. I just like the whole scene there at Bahia Honda. It's springtime. You have the, the biggest tarpon that we see in the whole year are migrating through. There are literally hundreds or thousands of fish there. There's people catching fish. It's just, it's just such a signature Florida Keys kind of moment there. It's just cool. All right, my favorite part. Your favorite part. Oh! Nice. My favorite part. That was a big fish, I remember, and he was, uh, you know, down there deep, you know, right at 20 feet of water, you know, when they're, when they're down there and you really have to, you know, just force them up, force them up. But finally he comes up there jumping by the boat and uh, I know you, one of your favorite things is wrestling them at the boat. I love it. And you got your workout on that one. I, I like handling them. I think it's just a, a, an incredible opportunity to be, you know, in touch with such a dinosaur of a creature. And I like to try to get the hook out of the fish and release them as, as 
unharmed as possible. And so that the way to do that, obviously, is to fight them as quickly as possible. But the other side to that is that when you fight them as quickly as possible, they're still pretty green at the boat. So <laughs> you grab them and they make this huge head shake. And sometimes, you know, you're not strong enough to, to hold on or I'm not. But I do really like that. See how it's time. There you go. The hook's perfect. Right now. Perfect. Oh, that's a great release yeah. right there, man. Good fish. That is. Good fish. Oh, he's good. Oh, I love the spring in the Florida Keys. Yeah, that's legit. Good luck, buddy. There's a lot of people out there like wearing gray suits that like you. <laughs> he's off and Yeah, good man. Shape. Good work. That's Let's good. see that leader. <laughs> that, is, that is the world's longest leader. Yeah. I'm going to measure that. Do a little rigging. Get mine very similar to that one. And uh, we'll be good to go. We know where the fish are. We don't have to find them now. You know, after you catch a fish, a lot of people like to crack open a beer and talk about it for a little while. But what I know about that situation is that that bite is going to last for a certain amount of time. And the faster we can get back on that spot, the more likely we are to get a bite. So, man, we are right back going in there and trying to figure out, OK, how do we get back into the spot where we were without messing up anybody else? So if you are directly downstream of it, you could go right into it. But a lot of times we choose to go around, way around the bridge, and then come back in and slide in so that we don't bother anybody else. But getting back on that bite is super important. And we, we got right back out there, fresh crabs, and started drifting those crabs again. Boy, they're back there, Rich. There's a lot of fish right here. I got my leader just like yours. Hopefully I can get one on first drift because they are in there. Got a boat hooked up right behind us. Fish are flying everywhere. I think we're getting most of our bites right on the seam. You know, you can see where the, the water's coming around the bridge and it kind of has a little eddy in behind the bridge piling. Those fish must have been just laying there in that one spot, you know, it's kind of stacked on each other where it's, you know, they're out of the current here. They're not, they've still got some current, you know, just that perfect little sweet spot. And it seemed like every time we got to drift down that seam, all of a sudden, boom, he was on. Fight, got him, got him. You're on. You put on a clinic. You really did. I, and I guess looking back on it, it's either the longer leader or a little bit more weight. But you were getting the drift that, that I was not getting. But you know what? It really didn't matter because you were getting bites pretty fast. And somebody has to drive <laughs> the boat, right? I mean, like this whole thing is really a team effort, whether you're chartering a guide and he's in charge of that, or you're fishing with your buddy like we are. As soon as one person hooks up, the other person has to be ready and capable of handling that boat in the current and doing exactly what is necessary to do. You need a quick release anchor, or you need to be on the trolling motor, the anchor lock there, so that you can just start the engine and put it in reverse and you are, you are going. Which side of this pole? Going on the right side? Going right, going right burning through the bridge. I knew this one was a really big one. I see him come up and jump through the bridge. You got the boat going back in there and, you know, just nothing better than fighting those big tarpon. It's uh, hard to believe that there's such big fish in such shallow water so close to the shore. I mean, crazy fish, big fish. Okay, got him on. It's hard to tell I had all that weed on my line. Coming up. Come on. Where'd you get that bike? Same place. I mean, like it's right shadow. under the boat, like right under the engine almost. I'm going to have to change up my rig again, I think. You know, you might have a hard time to understand how it could be similar to fish for a tiny little trout in a, in a mountain stream or fish for a big tarpon in the ocean, but it's almost the same principle. You have to get it at the right depth, and it needs to be flowing with the current the right way. And somehow, you were in the sweet spot. You had the right length leader, and you were getting the bite. That one as big as the last one, you think? I think he's bigger. Feel like he's ready? Well, all depends on your definition Ooh. of ready. About jumped into my face. Oh, that's, there he goes. Perfect. That's what I thought. Perfect. What happened? Did that hook straighten out? What happened? Yep, straighten the hook out. Whew. Pretty straight. Perfect. You didn't have to take it out. That was a circle hook. Now <laughs> it's a straight hook. All right, good job. 
That was good. I gotta get on the job, man. That was a big one. Over the last couple of years, there have been some technologies that have come out that have absolutely revolutionized not only the way that we fish here in the Florida Keys, but also the way people are fishing in freshwater all over the place. This is Lowrance Active Target. Lowrance Active Target is a transducer that can face in any direction. You can look forward, sideways, you can mount it on your trolling motor and actually even pan. The difference between what Active Target is doing and what traditional sonar was doing is that traditional sonar was like a snapshot in time. You would push a beam to the bottom, and if it hit something, it would echo back up and leave a little mark or, or an arch. And over time, those that got better and better and better, but you were just seeing what was directly under the boat. Now we can look forward, sideways, backwards in every single direction, and it is like watching video. You can see the fish swimming through you can see your lure or your bait and you can see them actually meet up and that's when you get a bite. Tarpon, permit, all kinds of bottom fish. We're using it out on the reef and we're having incredible luck with it. And the other technology that is really big for us down here is that you can mirror the Lowrance screen to your cell phone. So what that means for us is that we don't have to have a screen mounted in the front and the back and the side and everywhere that we're gonna fish. We're gonna fish off of our boats in 360 degrees. Sometimes we're gonna anchor from the bow, sometimes we're gonna anchor from the stern. So what we can do is just have our single screen mirror it onto our phone and be able to see what's going on with the active target right there where we're able to fish. These two technologies have really, really changed the game for us, especially in tarpon and permit fishing for my own purposes. So if you're interested in catching more fish, I'm telling you, you've got to check out the Lowrance Active Target. This is the best technology I've ever seen. Literally changed the game for us. Go to Lowrance.com, check it out for yourself. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, Live Deeper, Hook, Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter, Yeti, built for the wild, Key Largo in the Florida Keys, and by Golden Boat Lifts, Power Pole Move, Nikon, and Lithium Pros. Did you know you can get every episode of Saltwater Experience completely free on Waypoint TV? Go to waypointtv.com and find out how you can download the app or find it on any smart TV. And if that's not enough, you can find the Tom Rowland Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere you find podcasts. And we'd love to have you as a follower on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Got him. Big one. One of the reasons why I think tarpon is one of the greatest game fish ever is because not only do they eat all kinds of different things, you can catch them on all different kinds of tackle, but there's a very, very visual element to it of seeing them roll. And then of course, when they, when you actually are fighting them, they jump better than pretty much any fish out there. Let's get close to him this time. Keep going. Keep going. And then, you know, you, you combine that with they're available, you know, way up the East Coast, all the way around to Key West, all the way back up to the Panhandle of Florida and into Texas. So, so many people have access to the tarpon. And man, that's why they call him the Silver King. You know, it's interesting. We think, think of tarpon in just shallow water, but a lot of areas, you know, like Boca Grande, it's pretty darn deep. I think it's like 40 feet in there or more. Yeah. And then uh, I hear about these places in Central and South America. Oh, there he is. That's a big fish. Oh, there he is. That's a big fish. Yes, it is. Yeah, I like the look of that one.
the Florida Keys, we're so fortunate here. It's 150 miles long. You've got, I think, 42 bridges along the Florida Keys, and pretty much every single one of those bridges is going to hold some kinds of fish. Some of them are going to hold more tarpon than others. Some of them are going to hold more permit than others. Some of them more goliath groupers than others and snappers. And people are fishing all up and down these bridges. And it's really like if you put all these bridges together and all the access that people have, you can drive your car right up to the, to the bridge. You can walk out on the bridge and you can fish all these bridges. And if you put that together, that would definitely be the world's longest pier and the world's longest public fishing access. It's, it's super cool. Just a great resource for fishermen that want to fish from shore as well as you know what we're doing under the bridge like you can fish right there on that same bridge Bahia Honda is not the best bridge to fish from foot but there's so many more that give so many opportunities for fishing oh my a broken that? face right there for me that's a mean one twice It's under me. Want to bump it forward? Yeah. I don't even think we'll need it. That's a big fish, man. That is. Look how long that sucker is. It's nice. Look, the rod's seven. That's at least six. Look at that. Almost the length of the rod. Yeah. That's pretty big. It's the girth that counts. How many girth do you think you got out? I don't know. You gotta have something to wrap around him. <laughs> wow, that is a though. fatty. Look at those giant really scales. Golly. Wow, look at the back of it. That's cool. Wow. See you, baby. That's a big girl. Big. Woo. Big fish. <laughs> I'm soaking wet. <laughs> yeah. Man, you're putting on a clinic, dude. Yeah. I think I, I, get a bike. I think I figured something out. Must have. You taught me about that trout and fishing last night. I've been thinking about that for a year.